the Trump administration wants to change how the FPL is calculated. This is coming out of the Office of Management and Budget. It's in the form of a request for comment. It is not a rule. It is not a proposed rule change. It is a request for comment. So nothing is changing right now. But this is what it wants to do. It wants to evaluate if a different measure of inflation or cost of living should be used when calculating the FPL. And FPL stands for federal poverty level. That's that line of poverty that determines eligibility for a lot of social programs like food support, health coverage like Medicaid, and housing assistance. Now, currently, it's the consumer price index that is used as that cost of living and measure of inflation for determining the federal poverty level. It's been the consumer price index for years. That's the standard measure. Now, the consumer price index, if you actually had to peg a definition to that, is defined as following, a measure of the average change over time in the price paid by the urban consumer for a market basket of goods. And think of a market basket of goods as a combination of the cost of daily living, things like food, shelter, clothing, fuel, items you would need to survive. Now, the fact that the federal poverty level sets its poverty line at 100% for eligibility for a lot of programs is actually still quite low. But it is adjusted every year based on the consumer price index, and it does tend to increase by a couple percentage points every year. Now, because it is an index, it has changed over time, and that is annually, and that's how these benefits programs then base their eligibility. So we said that the Office of Budget and Management wants to consider a new measure. They haven't identified what that new measure would be, but a lot of experts are pointing toward the measure called the Chained Consumer Price Index as the one that might be most favorable to this administration. It is similar to Consumer Price Index, as the name applies, but it assumes that consumers change their behavior when prices change. So instead of just taking that snapshot once a year of the average basket of goods the average urban consumer would purchase, it uses what's called substitution bias in that calculation. So simply put, if prices go up, it assumes that a consumer might then choose the cheaper option of those products that are available instead of just assuming that the consumer is going to keep buying the average price good. So if all of the cost of housing goes up, this chained consumer price index might assume that a consumer might then go shopping and buy a cheaper apartment to offset those price increases in that area. So it's looking at the average consumer and what they might do if prices increase. This change CPI, therefore, because of this substitution bias, has a slower pace of price gains than the typical consumer price index has. Now, chained consumer price index changes quite frequently. Economists actually do a monthly snapshot to determine what the average consumer might do. You're already thinking, how might this work then for determining eligibility for public benefits programs? It might be logistically impossible unless they can determine some other snapshot to take to average out these costs. And why do you think the administration is leaning a little bit more towards this chained consumer price index than others? Uh, well, first of all, it's already incorporated in the uh, GOP tax bill that was signed into law in 2017, so it's already on the books in one area. So they might just point to administrative efficiency for tying it over to other programs. Uh, but others are saying because it's so readily apparent that it would potentially knock more people out of eligibility for public benefits programs across the board, Medicaid, food support, and housing support. But again, remember, no change is proposed. This is only a request for comment. So here's how you comment. You can address them, and we put the full list of how to submit a comment uh, on your screen. We also link up some of these uh, hyperlinks in the description below, so you can simply click, uh, click on them and submit the comments that you like. You can do it online or by email, and we give you the instructions of how to do that. There are a couple key phrases you're going to want to include, such as the type of comment and directive number that is applied to this request for comment. So you can read those on the screen, make sure you're responding to the uh, correct inquiry, and then send your comments on this as you see fit. Now, once again, we said the intent and impact of this could be quite dire. This is picking a measure. There are a lot of measures uh, of consumer price index that go beyond the, the average consumer. Remember, consumer price index looks at the average urban consumer right now. There are measures that look at non-urban consumers, and there are many other factors that could be taken into account to get the snapshot of who the, the 
benefit recipient might be that is or the consumer is taken into account. The administration is looking at chained consumer price index and a lot of the experts and advocates are there are saying because it most obviously is the measure that reduces eligibility for social programs. We've seen that across the board from this administration. So what are health experts saying? If you lose more people off the Medicaid roster, get ready for more people to go back to the old way of being uninsured, using the emergency room, increasing uncompensated care, rely on more on food pantries and instead of food support programs, and a general increase in the number of people living in poverty without social supports. It's not clear, however, if the administration can do this on its own. The way that the federal poverty level is calculated, at least for Medicaid eligibility purposes, is hard-coded into statute. The Department of Health and Human Services doesn't just make up the fact that they're going to rely on the Consumer Price Index when setting the FPL eligibility for better care in the state of Wisconsin or Medicaid more generally. It is hard-coded into the statute saying use the Consumer Price Index when determining annual federal poverty level for eligibility for your programs. So if this continues as a request for comment that turns into a rule, you can certainly expect that litigation will follow. And like we said before too, using a more frequent evaluation of the consumer price index by using the chain consumer price index could just be logistically impossible. It ignores also, and finally, that spending patterns for the very lowest income are dramatically different than those people with means. So looking at an average consumer and what they're doing and if they are in fact implementing substitution bias, if they actually are gonna buy the cheaper alternative if prices go up across the board, doesn't necessarily look at the populations that's the biggest user of social supports. There is extensive research on the fact that low-income consumers purchase things differently than wealthy consumers. You can think of that housing example we gave before. If housing prices go up across the board, will a consumer then pick the cheaper apartment so that they don't have to feel that cost increase? Well, for a lot of low-income consumers, they're already in the cheapest version of housing. There will be no substitution bias in that scenario. The research does not support the chained consumer price index being used in this way. And finally, the low expenditure population, more than anything, is the over 65 crowd. What would substitution bias look like for elderly populations who rely on Medicare for their programs for healthcare coverage? You can read this request for comment yourself. Again, use the description below to submit your own comments. You can also read the full version of this in the Federal Register where they, they spell out in detail their uh, ability to substitute consumer price index for something else. If you have a healthcare story or have comments on the federal poverty level, and how it's calculated, you can send us your comments or questions and you can find us at healthwatchwisconsin.org.